Hello everybody, so much you Zappy here, back again with Psycho Pass, we're on episode 11. So, in the last episode, um, we're kind of running around a saw type maze here, um, with Kogami and one of Akane's friends, um, Yuki, I believe her name's called. Uh, and they're sort of like, well actually I don't know where they are situated right now. I know that they started off like in like old like old Japan kind of area, like the kind of uh, the Japan that ended up being submerged. I don't know for what reason. I don't know if like because it's like a hundred years in the future, if it's like ice caps have melted and stuff, and the the, the oceans have risen. Um, but you know they've left old Japan kind of as it was. They haven't like torn it down or anything. They've kind of just let let it be and built like the city around it. So. Yeah, anyway, they started there, uh, Kogami went in alone, um, basically led there by uh, Senguji and um, Makishima, it is Makishima, and why do I keep, yeah, Makishima, yeah, that's his name, I keep forgetting his name all the time, um, uh, lured him onto a train where Yuki was, and then sent fucking miles on a fucking, on a train, to a location where there is a soul type maze with traps and stuff but there is a way out of course it's you know it's the whole thing with Makashima like liking to play a game with them um uh, so yeah uh, also the rest of the public safety bureau so Akane um Genoza and, and all of the enforcers uh are near I think they're, they're very close right so so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll see what we uh, what we get in this episode if they go to save them or not. Guess we'll find out. So without further ado, we're gonna get in episode eleven. So let's go. Tsunemori Kanshika, Masao Kawazete, Kogami o Sagase. Ore to Kagari, Kunizuka wa tewake shite bogai tempo no hashin gen o sagashita shi tsubusu. Hai. Ochan no anna koe hajimete kikimashita. Maji de seppa tsumatte da. Saints Supper. ラブクラフトがやられた撃たれて壊されたんだ現地でゲリラの襲撃にあったことがあるもう七八十年は前かなあの時も隣にいた同僚が撃たれたんだ私は飛び散った地吹きを頭から見てね被害しないでほしいが
level would go up, right? And he blocked up. あ、君と語り合う Wouldn't been so far away, it was probably Scar, right? Like a shotgun blast for it. How is he figure that out? いきているのが不思議なありさまだ。犯人は人質を取って依然逃走中。シェパード<笑> <laughs> oh, okay, Hello everybody, just a reminder that if you go into the link in the description of my Patreon and get the early access tier for $5 a month, you can gain access to four episodes of Psycho Pass every single week, as opposed to the usual two that the general public get every week. So if you're climbing for more reactions from me more frequently, then that's the place to go. Again, send the link in the description of my Patreon and get the early access tier for $5 a month. On with the video. <laughs> コウちゃんが一人撃ったみたいですね。待てて、ゆき。今助けるから。公安局の詰森や金監視官だね。あなたが雪を巻き込んだのね。よくも。尻尾ぐらいは捕まれていたというわけか。あなたには複数の犯罪について重大な嫌疑がかかっています。君が言
自らの意志で人殺しになれるものだけさ今すぐ勇気を解放しなさいさもないと The thing is... さもなければ僕は殺される君の殺意によってねそれが決断と意志の重さだよ犯罪ケースアンダー20執行対象ではない How far can you bring that down? どうしたちゃんと構えないと弾が外れるよ I don't think she's gonna... What the hell? <laughs> Alright. Where did you hit that? Did you... Where did you hit that? 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 What 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 did you hit that? Zero. What? Wow, Akane, well done. Quality, well done. Brilliant, well done. Fantastic. What? Yes, you fucking did, you stupid bitch. Stupid fucking, honestly. I hate stupidity. I just hate it. I hate it. After all that. Wow. Okay, episode 11. For fuck sake. Fuck sake. Come on. Like, you just. You... Alright, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the negatives out of the way first because you know, while I'm looking at this from a perspective of why Akane did what she did versus like obviously the fact like for the plot, this is actually really good. Now, as a as a character, I can hear it, like I I just no, I don't get it at all. I don't get like how you know what I mean. She is looking at this guy's coefficient. Go down, okay? The guy's clearly a fucking psychopath. Now, at this point, the she is literally weighing up her worldview and her friend, right? Now, first of all, she's, she must be doing it as fucking... Well, I was going to say she must be looking at them as fucking, like, equal value, which, uh, first of all, is completely wrong. Because if she is her fucking friend, she should weigh that up a hell of a lot more. Now, I get it that her fucking public... Like, the, because of the fact that her um, job is to be part of the fucking PSB and whatever the fuck, that, you know... She must do what the system says, regardless, even though, you know, it's clearly a fucking, th there's a massive flaw in that system, and that is what this episode is meant to convey. It's meant to convey, like, a fucking smack in the face, exactly why this system doesn't work, and it's completely flawed, right? Now, the thing is, she had the option there. To take him out, right? She could have done that. What would the con consequences would have been for her in particular? I don't know. But she weighed up the uh, the importance of the system versus a friend, and basically, basically let the, let the system win. So, not a fan. Not a fan. Not a fan of that decision. She wasted two... Well, basically the only... You know... The only ammunition she had for that gun. Shooting where? I clearly nowhere fucking near the target. Uh, also while holding, you know, it with one hand. I mean, that's a fucking shotgun. That's... <laughs> the recoil on that thing 
with one hand. <sighs> I'm not even going to take the fact that there could have been possible, you know, um, bullet radius right because of the fact that she was holding it in one hand anyway the recoil could have gone anywhere so her firing you know anywhere within the vicinity no matter how far away it is with that amount of recoil you still can't gauge where it's going to go so I'm not even going to give the fact that she didn't aim at Makashima in case she hit her friend as a legitimate excuse because she was holding it with one fucking hand I mean, you've just... <laughs> I'm so torn because uh, as an episode, that whole thing with Makashima is like one of, like a, a unbelievable scene. I love that scene, but so like for plot, it's great. But as a character. I'm just mad at her character for that. Like, I don't... <sighs> she weighed up the options. She's already faced this kind of thing before with the system and knows there's already a flaw in it. A tortured soul is as much as a cri is actually more of a criminal than what Makashima is, judging by this system. So she already knows that that's the case. She's watching his fucking coefficient thing go down, and yet she's She's, she's not doing anything to you know what I mean she already went against the system before so what what's to say why can't she go against the system again this time around you know what I mean so there's not even a th there is no argument for Akane's decision making there she's just she's literally just let her friend die that's what she's done I mean Now I'm kind of torn because I, I don't know if I don't know if this was purposely written this way so that people would get annoyed with Akane. I don't know if that's what they intended, but as you know, one of the protagonists of the show alongside Kagami, like you'd want to kind of get behind them. You know what I mean? And after that decision, I can't even... I, I don't know how... She's going to have to do something really fucking big to... To, to redeem herself from that. Because, you know, after everything Kogami's just gone through there, right? Not only to keep himself alive, but to keep, to keep her safe. And then she just lets that happen. As a character, like... That is a big letdown. You know what I mean? Like, that is just... She deserves to have the blame. Now, yeah, obviously you can turn the blame towards Makashima because you shouldn't be doing that anyway. But she had the opportunity there to do something and she did nothing. You know what I mean? Like, she did the worst thing she could have done, which was fire at fucking nothing. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yuki knew that after fucking Akane fired those shots, that that was it. She was done for. Because what could fucking, what could Akane do from down there now? Honestly, <sighs> yeah, absolutely stupid. 
ridiculous character choice, and I think honestly, like, I, I don't know what she can do that's going to redeem this, but she better do fucking something big because that is ridiculous. That's so stupid. Okay, now on to the actual good bit. So that whole scene was meant to convey the, the plot, like, of of how. You know, like I said before, it's a smack in the face. It's supposed to tell you exactly why the system doesn't work and why the system is completely flawed. Because somebody as, um, you know, somebody as so psychotic as Magashima is able to just to control. Control his own, like, body and feelings to the point of, you know, he's incredibly calm and collected during the situation. And therefore, he's not a criminal because the system doesn't doesn't allow like it doesn't classify him as a criminal. Um, so you know, as a scene, I love that. I love everything with Makashima there. That was great. Um, and at the same time using Yuki as a way to convey that is great because I think you know at the same time being it's not really a revelation because I feel like you know it's kind of it was already kind of set in motion like it was already like teased and you know if you paid attention you'll be able to figure it out immediately it's like well hold on a minute <laughs> you know what I mean um, so not only is it a big sort of you know punch in the face that yeah the law doesn't the system doesn't work but also using you know somebody who is important to a character to convey all of this makes it all that like way more impactful so I really like that um But again, it's just it's just overshadowed by Akane's sort of stupidity. Honestly, I genuinely genuinely believe. Well, I think it was actually serving, you know, almost three things. Makashima's sort of him saying that the system is folly, using Yuki as a way to convey it, and then getting a read on. Um, on Akane's, um, you know, whether she's actually capable or not of either saving her friend or, you know, not being able to go through with what the Dominator doesn't tell her to do. I think, honestly, at this point, it just kind of goes to show that society it relies so much, so heavily on technology that the whole society's fucked. Um, and I think that's why. You know, Makashima is such like a great character, like you know, he's smart, he's intelligent. And he's able to control the system by, you know, not through other technology, but by just being able to control his his psyche. Like being able to be so in control of himself that he can just bypass the system, doesn't matter what he's doing. So Yeah, it was an incredible scene. Um, anyway, yeah, so the other things we had like the Dominator, like, what is it? I don't, I don't even know what you'd call it, like, the sort of box that holds all of the Dominators inside can just automatically veer itself towards, um, towards agents and stuff. Because it was there, uh, it was coming towards uh, Kagami, right? At the very start. Um, the fucking the, the what are the cyborg dogs called? Lovecraft. Um, I mean, when you kind of get a a sense for a show that is sort of, and especially like in these series, it's like it's it's like horror based. Lovecraft has always had a. Um, a major impact on uh, on horror and especially like more in like in modern times um you know because like if you don't know hp lovecraft is a guy who uh 
he's the one that uh, created like Cthulhu and, and and all the the mythos shit behind that um and like stuff that's been influenced by him is fucking everywhere in, in like like horror movies today and stuff you know so yeah i like that little uh i like that little the fact that he's like involved in that regard um i wonder what the other dog's called then <laughs> hp i don't know um I did put, wrote, like write down if the Dominator effect, like would affect Senguji differently because he's a he's mostly machine. Um, I've noticed that over a couple of episodes, there's been some where the Dominator has been used against machinery as opposed to like a human, and it does a different thing. It, it's like it it says something like um, oh, I can't even remember, but it it says something differently, and the effect is different. Um, so I was wondering if, if it was going to affect Senguji differently but I, I'm guessing not though um, I mean when I kind of think about it I feel like it should affect him like it, like it would a normal human because he still has his, his brain and that's what it's sort of um, reading right and the fact that he has a human brain so it would yeah it would just affect him as a as a like as a normal human would, and of course it did anyway, because we saw when he when he got when he got blasted. Interesting how it only took off the back half of him though, <laughs> and not the um, and not the front, like not all, like all of it. Um, I don't know how the sort of impact works on that gun, because twice. Kogami has shot a guy in the arm and it's only exploded the arm off. Um, and imagine if it was to hit inside the torso, like all of you would be eviscerated, right? Pretty much. Although I feel like the first guy that ever got killed by one, basically the top half of him exploded and his legs were left, right? I can't even remember, but whatever. Um. So yeah, and also like, sh sh uh, when Shusei and, and Ginoza and stuff were like by themselves and whatnot, Shusei was like, he was like, hmm, there's been a, you know quite a few people like maybe it doesn't know a hundred like how has he figured this out? How does he know a hundred like a hundred odd people have died here? <laughs> how was, how could you figure that out? We're just looking around. I'd love to know, you know what I mean? Because like, there's this whole thing of like the enforcers have like a, a whole like they have more of a sort of a sense of like what's gone on and what's like been going on in the area around them and stuff. But sometimes when they say that, I'm like, how? Oh, come on, how how do you know that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's an interesting one. But yeah, that was uh that, that was a, a real good episode again. Aside from like. I'm so, I'm so torn because by letting Akane make stupid like such a stupid decision, it allows Makashima to have another layer to his character by trying to see if Akane is up to the up to the job to do it, right? But that is by having that It's at the, like at the downfall of Akane's character in order, in order to get that across. <sighs> and I'm wondering if it would have been any, if it would have been just as impactful or any better if he hadn't have even given out the gun in the first place, like the shotgun. You know what I mean? Because then it wouldn't have been at the fault of Akane, right? And then I wouldn't hate Akane, but his message would still get across. You know what I mean? I think it would have been better. That way. I think you could have had him testing um, an inspector in a different way. Instead of having it all clumped together as one. 
and that way you wouldn't have yeah I, I, and that way you know I wouldn't have any hatred towards Agnes because then she couldn't do anything you know what I mean but by him standing up there and still bringing these crime coefficient down you can you know you can still um you can still get that point across that the system's flawed. But uh, but yeah, I mean, aside from hating Akane this episode, and from now on until the foreseeable future, at least until um, unless she redeems herself, then I don't know. But, you know, uh, I want to know how, how the other friend's going to react to this. Cause, <laughs> I mean, she'll probably be, like, she's not going to be angry at it, right, is she? I don't know. Because she wasn't, she wasn't there to, to see the fucking stupidity. But anyway, yeah, that was all. So thank you everyone for watching. Uh, in the description below, I have links to certain things. One of them is the Discord. Uh, if you want to go over there, especially if you want me to react to a certain show, because that's where polls and things start. Uh, also, if you just want to come react, uh, react. Yeah, if you just want to come react. If you just want to come uh, talk to me out the community, then you're free to do that as well. Uh, and also, Patreon. So, Patreon set up so that you can... Uh, you can support me, um, you know, send me money and stuff, and I can give you rewards depending on how much you want to support me with. So uh, there's a bunch of different tiers. One of them is the early access. That's the $5 a month. So for that, you gain access to four episodes of every show that I do uh, on Patreon every single week. So, you know, for reference, the general public only get two episodes of those shows every single week. So you get double that, and you get them a week early. So if you're coming for more reactions from me, you want to get the early access that goes for like psychopath susan Haraki, tokyo ghoul and code gas every every single one of them gets four episodes a week uh, so there's that ten dollars a month that's the full length so if you want to see my full unedited reactions to all the shows i do then um then that's where you want to go it's all the shows i just mentioned plus my hero attack and titan and ray zero everything i react to gets a full length um so yeah exclusive tr that's 15 dollars a month so for that you gain access to another show i'm currently reacting to which is parasite um that will only be exclusive as it's airing so once i've completed reacting to it it will go up on youtube for the general public um and then another show will take its place in the exclusive all ovas and all movies reactions go into the uh exclusive tier as well uh so that's that 50 dollars a month that's the elite tier so for that you get a choice of a show that you want me to react to and i will react to it uh, it will go to the back of the list i think there's about seven shows in there so it might take me a while to get around to it but if you want to jump the queue and go to the very front of the list so that your show gets reacted to next, then you want to get the God tier, which is $100. Um, so yeah, the only rules of course, across those last two tiers are that it must be a sh show that is 150 episodes or less, and it must be a show that I've never seen before. And also those last two episodes are... Uh, episodes. Those last two tiers are accumulative. So obviously with my Patreon being on a pay monthly basis, if you pay like the first month and you, like $100 or whatever, and you get your show on the list, and then second month comes along. If you pay again, then you get another choice. So every time you pay, you get a choice of a show, yeah? But, uh, but that is all. So thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.